Welcome back to Blue Zone Homestead. I cannot wait to show you the progress on our chili plants. Look how beautiful they are, friends. It is, it is a big moment, the first big slice of tomato it's ready to harvest. So I cannot wait any longer. I'm going to harvest, harvest this tomato. Oh, look. Oh, it is a brandy wine. Looking beautiful. The slugs try to get to it. So I'm really, I was watching like a hawk coming up, coming out every night to take the slugs off it. And this is, I'm gonna leave this for another couple of days in a kitchen on a windowsill. And we're gonna have this as a tomato sandwich. The gherkins growing so quick. So, and this is the shape and the size, what I prefer to can. I'll show you in a sec, I'll get a few. So we're gonna do a few today. I've got a different recipe, my mom's. The sweet dill pickle, but my mom's recipe. Because I haven't got so many plants, I am picking this for a few days. I leave it in ice cold water in a fridge and then I think I have got ready what I need for pickling, that's when I do the job. But I am so happy so far how well these gherkins are doing because the past few years I wasn't successful growing gherkins at all. I like to pick them when they're quite small. I am so happy that this year's gherkins are so good. So this is the size. I really enjoy pickle them in when they're kind of this size. It's just a nice, lovely little bite, bite-sized pieces. I know it might look like, oh, it's what a waste that could have grown double or triple the size, but this is just such a delicacy, you know, I do, I do do them in, in a larger, on, larger size as well, but yeah, I, do, I just like it like this. So, and because they are looking so good, I think I'm going to have so much gherkins, to be honest. But we don't really need that many now because I've already, probably we've already got about 10 jars. So, and I've still got some from previous years. So I don't really need, I might need to come up with some other recipes. I really like just like chopping them, like on a mandolin or just slice it thinly with knife and put some onion in it, sugar, tiny little bit of water and vinegar and just leave it in a fridge overnight or a couple of nights. It's kind of like a fridge pickle with gherkins, onions, and it's so delicious. And we just have it with meals. And it's fresh and crunchy, it's absolutely delicious. Also just uh, have it as it is. I peel it, cut it in half, and with breakfast or anything, I absolutely love it. But I think the gherkin season just started. We are going to have so much more. I'm picking some basil, so we're going to dry this. Our next job, we're going to pick a bowl full of basil. I'm going to freeze dry some and going to leave it for the winter. I've already made, we've already made together some basil salt. So these ones probably just gonna stay in a big jar. And then whenever I need a basil flavor to any of my dishes, we are going to do through the summer autumn and winter, it's gonna be there for us. Let me show you how well the chilies are doing this year. So, all, most of this side, I've got the Sugar Rush family. So I've got three variety, the Sugar Rush Peach, Sugar Rush Red and Sugar Rush Peach Stripey. And I think what is nearly ready now the sugar rush peach the reason it called that because it starts with that same like the paprika pepper color this yellowy green and then it goes to this peachy color can you see that peachy color i think it's amazing it's definitely turning to peachy 
Joga Rush Red, what's at the moment, it's still, it's got this very unusual shape. This one is now turning in the bottom. Very wrinkly and unusual looking, but it's so funny. So I'm very curious what this is going to turn out like. The stripey, it's coming slowly, but it's still in that yellowy green stage. Look how well the cayenne pepper's looking. It's actually now reached the top of the greenhouse. It's absolutely massive. And they already turned to this beautiful red color. They're absolutely gorgeous. They are now ready to harvest. It to me, the Zimbabwe black chili. It's got this little tiny chilies on them and it's black in color. They're a beautiful little plant. I gave to my friends as well and they like it as well. I think it look it would look actually really nice as a house plant because it's got such a beautiful purple flowers and these little tiny dark and green leaves. So I've got four jalapenos in here and we've got quite a lot on them now. They're still small but I've got high hopes for the jalapenos. The black Hungarian chili is so beautiful as well. So from this dark, nearly black color, and then it turns to this beautiful red afterwards. Well, on this one, that it starts green, and then it turns to dark before it turns to red. Beautiful and very prolific plant. That's how I remember it from last year. It's very spicy, the Christian yellow. Yeah, so it starts as a green, so a little bit looks like the cayenne chili pepper and it turns this beautiful yellow color. The least advanced stage is my chocolate habanero. Although I've just spotted this little tiny thing. I didn't know this is gonna be this tiny. There's only a little chili there. So oh, I'm very curious what this is gonna turn out. I am ready to make the sweet dill pickle. This is my mum's recipe, so this is going to be slightly different of the one that we've just made not long ago. I've got my ingredients list here what my mum gave to me. I ask her every year. I'm so not organised when we write down the recipes. One day I'm going to start, down, start writing down the recipes. So for, for today's um, project we're going to use one and a half litre of well water. To that I'm going to add half a litre of white vinegar and half a kilogram of white granulated sugar. And I'm going to put this on a stove behind me and we're going to boil this mixture and make sure the sugar dissolves. So let's find out how much cucumbers we've got. So I've been picking these cu cucumbers the last few days and in ice cold water they were in a fridge. And today I'm going to use pint jars. So let's see how much, oh that water is really cold. But they're still nice and crisp. So we've got one kilogram in here. Just put it in there for now. One kilogram and a bit. So we've got 1.3 kilograms of gherkins, pickling gherkins today. And let's see how many pints we can, pint jars we can fill in with this amount. And other ingredients, I'm going to use two garlic cloves per pint jar. I'm going to use this mixture, the pickling mixture. We're going to add probably about half a tablespoon to each jar. So we're going to use up some peppers, onions, dill head with anything else, with dill leaves. I'm going to add one grapevine to each jar and 
one bay leaf. And I think that's it. So what I'm going to get ready before we start pickling, I'm just going to remove the blossom and bit from my gherkins where the enzyme grows, what can spoil our, not quite spoil, but turn it mushy. And we want this to be nice and crunchy for a long time. The grapevine will help that as well. And I think we are ready. And other thing I'm going to get ready because we're going to do use a water bath canning. But today I'm not going to wait until the mixture come up to boil and wait 25 minutes. But in this method, I'm just going to put the warm jar to the warm water. I'm going to wait until it comes to rolling boil and then I'm going to remove it. So this is that method. Right. Let's go and start mixing the brine mixture. Mixing, I mean, you know, dissolving the sugar in the brine and put up our water bath can with some water. Another thing what I usually forget to mention that I do use this on the bottom of my pot because this is just my normal pot where I make soups or anything but you do need, I, I use this so the jars is not right on the bottom because otherwise that would, like that would crack. I am ready to fill the jars. So my jars are sitting in this hot water, so I'm just going to remove them. So at this point these jars are very hot. Put the lid on, that can come up to very close to a boil while we're filling up these jars. I have decided to put about a quarter, half a pack of this pickling spice to my water. It's, the kitchen smells gorgeous. Right, now we are ready to fill the jars. So, I'm going to add some grape leaf, some onion, pepper in the bottom, and I'm going to start with the largest size of cucumbers. Most of my cucumbers I've picked, gherkins, are on a very small size, but that's how I like them. So I'm just going to pack them as tight as we can. Really want them packing tight. And I'm just keep adding bits and bobs. So I'm going to add some dill head. That will give an amazing flavour. That's it. And then I'm going to add a bit of this pickling spice. In there, about half a tablespoon. Got some in a brine, remember, as well. And I think we're good. And we just fill it up with our cucumber. Keep saying cucumber, they are gherkins. This one is one of the largest one. Make sure our cucumbers really really nice and clean otherwise it will spoil oh do you know we forgot friends garlic make sure we add a few garlic in there as well and the pickling spice perfect add this pickling spice Perfect. I would ideally prefer wide mouth jar, but I've only got one. 
so it's okay. Our brine is close to boiling point. Let's focus what else is missing. We've got grape leaves, grapevine leaves, garlic, spice, We've got the bay leaf, dill head. Dill head's missing. We've got onions. Okay. Oh, it smells gorgeous. The kitchen smells divine. I really enjoy pickling gherkins. I had some ingredients, so I just popped, popped out to the garden and harvested some of these climbing beans. And we're going to do same way than a gherkin, as an experiment. I'm just snipping both ends off. I've already washed them real well. And if they are too big, I'm just going to just half them. Like that. The water is now boiling, so it's ready to go. I'm just waiting for the brine. It's very close now to come up to temperature. I've got the lids ready as well, the two part lids. Washed nicely. You might have one jar, that's okay. Perfect. Now we are ready to pour the brine over the gherkins. Brine is now boiling. to go oh it smells gorgeous I absolutely love the smell of this pickling brine we're gonna add a little bit to each jar so the jar gets up to temperature Smells very, very vinegary, but I absolutely love it. And now we just we can fill the jars up now until an inch. We leave an inch headspace. A little bit left, a bit of brine. But we are. Oh, there's one more to do. There you go. Next, I'm going to remove the air bubbles. jar. Make sure there's no food particles on the on it and now we can up the lid. Nearly done. Finger tight. And they can go in to the water. The 
it's not quite boiling yet, but we've got a few minutes there. So until we're waiting on the sweet because to come up a boil so we can remove it. I've got a little time. So all these basil is from last year's garden and they are freeze-dried basil. I'm going to put this to this other jar. Oh, it smells gorgeous. We've definitely got enough basil now for another year. I really enjoy making basil sauce and just use it in, in cooking. I think it's fantastic. So this was very easy. I also now filled the freeze dryer. I've got two freeze dryer. One is not quite working right at the moment, so I just try to work out what the problem is. I think the fridge, the freezing part of it, it's, it's not fry, quite freezing as it should. But I filled both with uh, goat's milk. One after the basil came out. I've only used one, the working freeze dryer for the basil, but I've used both for the milk and one is now nearly finishing off and other one is still in a freezing process so this is just something I need to keep my eye on and try to fix it but yeah um, with with the freeze-dried milk obviously as a powder we can just store it so when we haven't got milk we're just gonna reconstitute add some water back to it and we have got milk but I would like to experiment to make my own condensed milk because I do use condensed milk to make our homemade yogurt or homemade ice cream and what I would like to do I would like to put milk back to the milk powder so it's very creamy and then maybe try it with sugar or honey and we'll see how it goes but yeah let's check if it's boiling now Yeah, it's just started to boil. So I'm going to remove the whole pan very gently, just on the side. I, if I could, I could, if I would have used the electric or the gas cooker, I would just turn it off and leave it there. With my auger, I can't turn it off because it's always on. So very gently, I'm just going to remove the water bath can on the side, leave it for five minutes, I'm going to remove the lid and then we're going to remove the jars and we're just going to leave it in here until it cools down, probably for overnight. And tomorrow we're going to check the seal, make sure it's all good and we're going to put them in, in a pantry. Thank you. 